tell you, I, I will tell you something cute. Yesterday I was telling you my daughter had had some. Uh, so she she ended up. She said she went and she was meditating, and Dolly the our cat, like it was our family cat, and then um, Rachel Rachel has her now. And so Dolly went and was meditating with Rachel. And Rachel said she went really deep. And, and then after the meditation, about 20 minutes or 25 minutes, she she came back and she got up. But she said Dolly was still in that meditative state. And she said, I guess when I moved, I shifted her. And, he, and she said it brought her back. And she was like, it, she was stunned. She didn't know where she was. She didn't know anything. She was looking around, and and Rachel said she was calling her, calling her, and then finally she kind of shook herself and and she came back. Um, so even yeah, so in that that sense, the animals are shifting too, and they, I mean they can go into those altered states of awareness. Yeah, I've noticed that there are more, um, the ones that I, I feel that the ones that actually have like the real souls, because there are ones that don't, you know, the lights are on, nobody's home, you could tell. The ones that have a real souls, I'm noticing that you're able to communicate with them more and you're able to connect with them more. And you, just by them looking at you, you can feel it, you know, it's just, it's becoming even stronger, the connection. It's so cool. Yeah. Because you yeah. said this yesterday. Last night I had the hardest time sleeping because I, I had my um my subliminal music, the Jade Emperor I was listening to. And I'm noticing my cat, he just really sits right by my head, head to head. Like he has to be right next to my head. And then he's purring the whole time. But it's like taking me to a state, but it's like a bit overstimulating. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, as if you're, I don't know, it was like, I'm um, not just the vibration, but the energy of it. It was, it was like keeping me awake, but I'm feeling like the energy, the waves of energy going through my body. But you know, what's interesting about that is Dr. Um, what is his name? Dr. Hawkins. Is it David Hawkins? Because it's yeah. not. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Dr. David Hawkins was talking about. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, so he has those levels of consciousness. The, right. that yeah. He said yeah. that when, the, when the cat purr, it's the vibration of 500. Mm-hmm. So it's elevating it, you know, he said, focus on things that are 200 and above, but yeah. at, it was at 500, but it, it was percolating. I don't know. It was just it's very, very powerful to be next to him and him purring, but it seems like he's doing this now every time I'm trying to go to sleep mm. versus, so just lay, versus just laying there, you know, like normal. It's like, uh, the whole time and I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's, this is like, at first I was happy because I was like, yay, the vibration of, you know, 500, ooh, like I'm getting freebies, you know, like <laughs> free, um, free energy, but, but you know, it so much energy, it was so much. The Monroe Institute um, had a disc, a, um, a hemi-sync disc that it is just cat purring. Oh. It was just a cat purring, a soft purring, but it's also that frequency of the cat purr. And, and the cats will have different purrs. They're also a very, it's also healing to the energy because there's, it's a frequency. Yes, the frequency of love is the frequency of the earth, right? And and that's where the healing comes. So it's it's also an unwinding of, of situations and as well. Now, have you ever thought about trying to go to sleep without the subliminal messages or whatever in the background and just oh yeah because my cat always sleeps at my head or my partner's head and we like i i will be out so fast i, I had no choice <laughs> but to turn it off because it was blasting me with way too much energy 
Because he's like, girl, you don't need that. You need me. Yeah. <laughs> so I got it on the screen, the map of consciousness. I'll try to make it bigger since because we are recording it. Because ah! I can't just let Terry talk because she can't do it. Can't. <laughs> Terry, Terry just takes it. She doesn't Terry- know how. She's not a casual woman, y'all. She's just, you know. I get off on a tangent? I don't know how to use my laptop, y'all. I swear to God, I really don't. Oh, God, help me. Uh, (laughs) Okay, so 500 is love. Right. Oh, gosh, I don't know how to make it bigger. Yeah, 500 is love. Open image in a new tab. Okay, so I opened it. Oh, come on. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Why? Why? Oh, well. So let me see. Map of consciousness. Here it is. Okay, so I just wanted to be able to open this on the screen so people can Mm. see it since we were talking about it. I don't know what you guys can see. Okay, good. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So 500 is love, benign, love, reverence, revelation. So it's very strong. If he had hit me on 700, I would have probably popped out of the bed. I couldn't take it. (laughs) (laughs) To take those free cat purrs. As you can take them, take them, take them as you can get them, right? And I don't know how to find you guys again, but. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Here we go. So you were talking, Terry, also about an individual that you know, they were feeling like a little emptiness. And I don't know if it was necessarily depression, but I think it's that void that we were talking about, that emptiness. Yeah, the emptiness and the feeling. And, and um, I think what happens is that if, if you let a negative thought in, you end up opening the whole floodgate. And then you just feel like it just pulls you down. So we have to find a place or, or a way to stop that so that we can gather ourselves again because we are, uh, we are so open to other people's feelings and other people's thoughts. So we end up taking it as our own. And then we start to create a story around it and and it'll just sort of pull us down more and more. And we have to find a way of just saying stop. And, and, um, And, you know, like, let me pull myself out of it. And, you know, in this case, uh, taking some Bach flower remedies, but having some essential oil around there, even some salt, and then just starting with um, pulling your energy back and saying, "Is this mine, or or is it some, or does it belong somewhere else?" And and that energy will, those negative energies will just cling on to us, and we have to be able to just say, push them aside and say, "This I, this is no longer." Part of what I, I don't need to let that um, energy take the power away from me. And, uh, you know, you can still be in a situation, but you don't have to be sucked into it more and more. So. And so what, what, what I was also mentioning about the void is like, here we are always on the hero's journey. Like if, if I get this, when I get that, as soon as I have this, then I'll feel like this. And we kind of place all this importance on constantly moving forward, like getting a new crystal, getting a new device, getting married. Oh, it's almost my birthday. And then we we spend all, a lot of time burning up a lot of adrem- adrenaline, getting to the next step. And then once you get it, it's like, oh. Now what? Because we're so used to being amped up and in motion and in the process of doing instead of the process of being. And I feel like that's part of what's been implanted into our culture that that makes us um, 
so stressed out and so overwhelmed. That's a part of being a part of the matrix, being a part of the system is um, not having and then trying to find the solution and staying in the rat race and is constantly staying in motion and not, and I guess that's it. Like we're constantly being pushed to keep pushing and we haven't learned how to just relax and be, and be in a state of, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just enjoying this right now. But like you said, just observing it and allowing it to flow through you and not, and maybe not, not even that you need anything, but just, that you can let it pass through you without feeling like there is something wrong with you. Uh, you know, being able to sit with yourself and know that, oh, okay, I'm fine. It's it's nothing wrong. It's just I had to point, you know, I had to become aware of this state of being versus that I need to be fixed because we don't always need to be fixed, right? We don't always need to be growing and changing and and I think this is, you know, why last year I was saying to people, like, I think spirituality has become a job, like where you got to be the, you know, your schedule of meditation on a daily basis. And you got to be, you know, constantly having some type of input, whether it be videos or books or reading, or you got to be using devices, or you got to constantly be buying uh, crystals or, you know, going and doing and, and trying to obtain versus this is life. And allow it. Well, we, and you talked about that before, that we, we you, you jump from one guru to a next guru. And, but, you know, like you listen to all of these different things, but have you had the time to implement it? You know, like you can be on a learning curve and you can take a hundred courses, but if you haven't, if you haven't brought them into you and, and started actually working on it, how can, you know, you're just jumping and, and you're, you're jumping and jumping and jumping that you haven't assimilated the information that you've, that you've learned, you know, like people are, are, are book smart, but they don't necessarily bring it into their, into their being. I, I just, I'm just amazed because I think where, where it leads you back to is can you be grateful for the the cold or the warmth or the fact that you're safe and at home or comfortable? Like, and then that's what leads me back to just being grateful for being, being grateful for whatever it is, whatever state that you're in. Be grateful for sadness, be grateful for tears, be grateful that you have emotions, you know, um, be grateful for, you know, the feeling in your toes, you know, that, and so, so even that state of void of nothing, be grateful. And then, I mean, even that moves you out of it, that can shift you out of this feeling weird, awkward, or out of place. It was getting back to that moment of constantly being grateful, you know, be, just being grateful because sometimes I'll, I'll shift myself into tears of gratitude just from grass or trees or, you know, the, the, just, just being like, I'm safe. I'm comfortable. I'm safe. I'm happy to be safe inside my body and, and go forward with that. Well, we'll go do some cards. <laughs> Cards. And I, I, I just, I just, as you're talking, I pulled some cards for just generally. You're very I, sneaky this way, Terry. Very sneaky. I know, but because in that way, <coughs> I'm listening and I'm, I'm connected with the energy. And so the cards are coming up based on the energy flow we're in. So the cards today are from um, the Sacred Traveler by Denise Lynn. And I pulled three cards. The first one was vast vistas, which is expand your horizons. The second one is journey by moonlight, believe in magic. And the third one is grounding, uh, go deep and explore your roots. And so um, because we're, we're talking about all of this today is sometimes we get pulled into um, feeling down about about everything but 
we have to remember that we are um, going to have these ebbs and flows in things. And so when we feel like we're so low, if we just stop and we say, wait, there's so much to explore. There's so many vistas. There are other ways of, of you know, we only see one path without realizing we have so many other options. And um, the universe will sometimes, you know, like our ego keeps us saying that we got to go this way. This is the only way. But meanwhile, there's so many other things that are out there that we only, um, we're not, we're not looking um, beyond what we've focused on this one path. And so I think this whole idea of the uh, expanding your horizons, the vast vista, he's sitting on the edge of a cliff and he's looking out to the water, but he's got, uh, you know, like he's got a, a, a view all around him. So um, I think we have to sometimes stop and uh, whenever we're in that place is just say, whoa, and, and take a few minutes, however we can, whether it's through a meditation, whether it's just contemplative thinking, whether it's allowing our imagination to flow, just see if there's another possibility of, of how I could change it. If I could change the situation, what would I do? And, you know, part of it is being grateful for being in the body, for being safe right now, for being sheltered or, or whatever it is that we have as is being grateful for that and then open up to a broader view. And then, you know, the next one is journey by moonlight. And that's that's that whole idea of believing in the magic is once you've opened up to um broader view then the magic can propel us in that way and you say you know whether we want to use an affirmation or or just a, a, a stop the negative thought flow um there's a magic in it and so even using a little affirmation like i believe in magic and just you know the possibilities are, are endless so bringing that idea within ourselves that that there is forces that we don't have to be pulled into that negative force there's you know because we know that for all the negative there's also positive and we have a tendency to forget that now because there's so much negative that we're seeing but you know that there's just as much positive and so we have to start allowing ourselves to feel that positive influence instead of being pulled down by the negative because there is there is that balance and and so we've just forgotten that there is the positive side so that's that whole idea of believing in magic knowing that there is that positive outcome and it's just a matter then of going deep exploring your roots grounding that into you you know because i think the negative has a way of pulling as is uprooting us and it's pulling us into another direction we have to find our grounding and pulling ourselves back in and then that way that positive flow can come back into our lives instead of being pulled up and, and uprooted into another direction. So I think that the whole idea of, um, uh, of just what we're feeling right now, it's a matter of changing our perspective, opening up to a, a more positive outlook and grounding that into ourselves because um, we have just as much power from the positive as the negative has. It's an illusion that the negative has that power. So we just have to bring ourselves back and and um, believe in, in the magic that we have. I I was so tickled by those cards because here, here in the first card with the vistas, yeah. you can look out at the world and it can be so overwhelming. It can be so stressful. Um, we do need to broaden our horizons, but even sometimes when we want to dream big, that can be so overwhelming. But um, but here we are. We have to, you know, just keep moving forward, right? right? And then in the second one, he's by the moonlight. And I love that card because it's by, you know, my my birth card is the moon card. And what that is is, you're, you're walking or you're moving in the dark 
and it's not fully illuminated. And so that can be mm-hmm. kind of scary because you don't really know what's going to happen next. But, and and then you're also alone. In all three cards, he's alone. So it's the, lo- the lone travel, you're alone, but you can't see everything that's going to happen. But it's also taking you from the one person looking at everything and then narrowing the vision down to what, what pertains to you. And then not always knowing everything that's going to happen moving forward. And then coming back to the point of being alone by the tree and contemplating and believing in yourself. So it's like this, it was like a narrowing of the vision and being comfortable with that. Be comfortable Mm -hmm. with the fact that you don't know, you know, everything that's going to happen. You don't need to have all these predictions. Maybe you don't because you you have to focus on what pertains to you. And I think kind of like we were saying, we'd we'd like to have all this input and all this knowing. But the best knowing is going to come when you settle yourself to become connected to the source and taking the relevant messages that belong to you. And that takes quiet at times. That takes Mm -hmm. peace. I was talking to someone last night, even about Violet and my other sister. My other sister grew up in a house with four kids. Violet grew up in a house with seven kids. I was lucky enough to be like, uh, it might seem unlucky to be an only child in the house, but I had lots of time to think for myself, by myself. And so I think a lot of times people become followers because they're so used to being in groups. Like if you're in a big family, you do what other people are doing. You're imitating what other people are doing and your beliefs are affected by the other siblings that you have where I spent so much time alone and reading my own books that it's allowed me to become more of an individual Mm -hmm. than a lot of people have been able to. And so even in our adult life, here's a chance to pull back. Like a lot of times people, they constantly or have the need to be surrounded by people or or in a relationship, but they don't get to spend time to get to know themselves enough. And then when you get in these relationships, you kind of wonder, you lose your own self because you're constantly thinking about the needs and desires of others or you're thinking Mm -hmm. about the group or us as a group or and and now you don't really get to know yourself and so then during the relationship people begin to move out and change because they they're now learning who they are and they hadn't had that opportunity to do that throughout the beginnings of their life because they're constantly surrounded by people so these are just things that you can observe for yourself. Like, have you had time with yourself? Do you always have the TV on? Like I stopped listening to the radio in 2009 because I was going through a creative process, going to school for film, but I wanted to have original thought. And if you're listening to other people's music and watching other people's movies, how do you create your own? Because you begin to imitate instead of create original thought or what we think is original thought, because we know that we're constantly receiving. But how can we hear? Because we can't hear our guides and we can't hear the messages from source a lot of times when we're constantly taking on things from our environment. So it is good, right? Take that time. Mm -hmm. And I believe we'll move on to individual readings and shut down this recording. Yeah. But it's been a great week and I'm grateful in my body. I'm really grateful, but I'm I'm not having to feel excessive highs and excessive lows. I'm not stressed out. And I'm feeling settled. And even that can be like, oh, blah, why do I feel blah? But it's not really blah. It's okay to be content and be comfortable. And I, I think... Our society is one that we always want to be uh, be constantly um, um, in a state of what's next, what's next, what's next, we, you know, and, and so we don't take that time in appreciating that time that we have 
to process because we don't process the information that because we're so used to always being fed stuff that we don't take a time to process it. And it's just like all the, we, we talked just a few minutes ago about all the book learning and all the learnings, you know, do you, when you read a book, do you stop and contemplate it? Do you stop and think about what you've read? Or do you move on to the next book? You know, like there's some people who can read a book in, in you know, two hours. Uh, my question is, what have you actually processed in that book? Are you reading words or are you reading the thought behind it? So uh, I, I think it's important for us to just contemplate a little bit and, and maybe it is sitting with yourself and just thinking about, you know, what was the, my end of the day like? You know, what happened to me at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day? What is my day going to be like? And, and um, you know, just believe in the magic and it's going to be a magical day today you know, taking a few moments. It doesn't have to be hours. It doesn't have to be half hours. It can be three minutes, you know, but, but taking that time to go within and, and um, just feeling the gratitude of being instead of projecting ourselves into other places, just be in the present moment. Anyone in the group want to throw their two cents in and I'll, or I'll close it out. If I even know how. <laughs> this thing is a trip. Okay. All right. Well, you all have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah. Jax. Oh, I just said bye. Oh, bye. <laughs>